A welcome fit for a queen. Miss Bahamas Universe returns home. We've got the highlights. Also, allegations concerning a former deputy prime minister intensify. And later, BBL workers in protest mode once again. We'll tell you why coming up. This is Eyewitness News. This portion of the news is brought to you by BTC's Superfast Extreme Internet Bundle. Make Christmas sparkle. Sign up today. Good evening, everyone. I'm Janae Noel. Thanks so much for joining us. 
Off the top tonight, it was a day of celebration for the return of Miss Bahamas Universe, Chantelle O'Brien, who made history for the Bahamas at the Miss Universe pageant on Sunday night in Israel. The 27-year-old beauty queen was welcomed at the Linden Pinling International Airport with lots of fanfare this morning. Our Theo Seely has been following her journey since that landing with an exclusive interview on Sunday night. He has the details of her official welcome at LPIA in tonight's top story. 72 hours after making history for the Bahamas at the Miss Universe pageant in Israel, Chantelle O'Brien touched down at Lyndon Pinling International Airport at 1128 Wednesday morning, receiving a Queen's welcome with a water salute and a full lineup of dignitaries to greet her, including First Lady Anne-Marie Davis. And moments after setting foot on Bahamian soil just before embarking on her motorcade through the inner city today, she told Eyewitness News her years of community service and mentoring is what allowed her to shine on the international stage. You can only have as much pride for your country and it be shown on stage in terms of how much you are able to put into your community. So this is a girl from Angleston. What does it mean to you to be able to travel through the streets of Angleston today on this slow parade? It feels great. It feels great because I, one of the reasons why I decided to compete in the first place in 2013 was to be a representation. And she received a warm welcome for being that representation of an inner city girl who says she rose from struggles to triumph. Miss Bahamas Universe! Chantel competed four times before finally getting a shot at the Miss Universe stage. With her mother by her side for the ride, she says today, it's all been worth it. And I've always wanted her to see the value in what I what I do because I feel like it was so unconventional. I mean, to decide to, to compete, yes, and then decide to become a coach, that's another thing, especially that we're, for the fact that we're not a pageant-cultured country. But I think that it, it's not about pageantry. It's really about, you know, rearing our young girls in the right direction. The Bahamian Queen's official welcome home ended here at Fusion Superplex today. She got a bevy of prizes and two special announcements made by the U Sports and Culture Minister Mario Boleg, as well as Tourism Investments and Aviation Minister Chester Cooper. Our commitment is to ensure that pageantry in the Bahamas stays at a level and continues to soar. This will happen through regulation and good policies, beginning with the formation of a National Council of Pageantry. On Monday, Chantel will be offered a full-time role with the Ministry of Tourism. Chantel also received a $5,000 cash donation from the I.L. Cares Foundation. Theo Seeley, Eyewitness News. Well, in other news tonight, it was a win at the end of a rocky road for former Sky Bahamas Chief Randy Butler, but the controversy surrounding the alleged involvement of the former Deputy Prime Minister resurfaces. Our Matthew Moxie has more on this tonight. Former Deputy Prime Minister Peter Turnquest was added as a defendant to a legal action involving an alleged $33.4 million bogus loan conspiracy. This after former Sky Bahamas CEO Randy Butler won his bid to set aside a default judgment against him in a high-profile fraud case. Turnquest, who stepped down as second-in-command when the allegations surfaced in 2020, declined to comment on the matter. Meantime, attorney for the plaintiffs Michael Scott telling Eyewitness News that despite the ruling by Justice Loren Klein, this does not mean Butler is in the clear. In essence, the judge is requiring us to, to flesh out the claims in our statement of claim. That is not a victory because the, the, the merits of my client's case and his claims against the defendants have to be determined on the merits after now a full trial. Back in April, Butler, who was accused of defrauding two companies of millions, lost his bid to have a judgment in default of a defense entered against him set aside. Tonight, Butler is slamming what he calls a dark conspiracy to damage his reputation. I think that this whole system need to be revamped, you know. Um, it, it shouldn't matter who you are. Um, the rules are the rules, and justice is justice. And we um, shouldn't be taken light that you could take a person family and try to take uh, life, livelihood, and destroy their, their name and business in the process. And with the assistance that appears, with the assistance of 
the government of that day. Justice Klein, in a ruling on Butler's appeal against the decision of the deputy registrar, said he was completely satisfied that Butler's appeal should be allowed and the registrar's decision set aside. Butler said he and his family were working to get their finances back on track after the legal issues stemming from the allegations resulted in severe financial hardship. I've got, I'm a, a person of work hard and um, I've got friends and charity organization like uh, that we've supported came alongside us and helped us and uh, Bishop Hanchel and his wife and folks are, and I'm on the bullet board there and I, I'm thankful to them, you know, to the Great Commission. Even they came along and helped the members of the board and others. Matthew Moxie, Eyewitness News. Well, access has been denied for dozens of Bahamas Power and Light employees stationed at the Blue Hills Power Station. A new security protocol, according to the union president, now forces them into unsafe territory. Arjuna Longley has more on this. Uncalled for, disrespectful, but most of all unsafe, is how president of the Bahamas Electrical Workers Union, Kyle Wilson, describes new protocols implemented at the Blue Hill Power Station. A fence has been erected around the plant, which now prohibits employees from driving to facilities, leaving them having to walk through generators and fuel tanks. I have seen transformers explode. I've seen a little transformer this big, and that sounds like a missile strike. These things blows at millions and thousands of pounds of pressure. Something fly off, jump, you could be killed. And according to Wilson, to add insult to injury, the new blockages conflict with fire safety routes. Fires have been happening all across BPL as of late. Next to me is the landing building foreman who was in charge of the yard. No one consulted him, no one told him about these changes, no one gave him a key. In the event of an emergency, who do I turn to? I weigh 300 pounds, so I'm not the world's greatest sprinter. And so when I run to what I would think to be the muster station or the exit for a fire or an emergency, that's locked. Where do I run next? Now, according to the Water and Sewage Workers Union President, Dwayne Woods, he has contacted the safety team of that corporation to find out how they can address these security protocols that works for both management and workers. Now, the BPL Union President, Kyle Wilson, said he tried to do the same thing with the BPL safety team, but his calls went unanswered. Health and safety conditions the corporation is being hampered by this new um, what's so-called safety protocol but when we came and did our investigations it appears as though the safety protocols that were in place for years are better than what is being implemented now, while the BPL CEO, Whitney Hasty did not respond to calls up to news time, Wilson says the union is expected to meet with the Minister of Public Works, Alfred Sears, next week. Janelle Longley, Eyewitness News. Meantime, a virtual town hall meeting for public school parents, teachers and students is scheduled for tomorrow night at 8 p.m. and will be viewed live here at the ILTV network. According to the Education Minister, Glennis Hannah Martin, the meeting will address concerns on student safety as well as other key topics. Hannah Martin also revealing in a video today that students will return to face-to-face -to -face learning with hybrid learning instruction on January 11th while stressing that the final preparations for all schools Schools are now taking place. She's encouraging parents to continue safe practices over the holidays to ensure that children are healthy enough to return to in-person learning. For public schools throughout the Bahamas, 2022 will be the year that we bring our students back into the classroom for face-to-face -face learning. We are on schedule for the launch of the face-to-face -face hybrid reopening of all public schools on the 11th of January. Our teams are hard at work to ensure that all of the infrastructural and resource needs of schools throughout the Bahamas are met. We've called all hands on deck to support this effort. Our objective is, first and foremost, to ensure that all students can learn safely while experiencing improved learning outcomes as a result of the resumption of face-to-face -face learning. Thousands of students who struggled for various reasons with digital-only learning will now have the opportunity to receive quality face-to-face -face instruction. 
When one month after emergency orders were expired, the Minister of National Security, Wayne Monroe, stating today that there's no telling when restrictions will be relaxed at the Bahamas Department of Corrections. Since the onset of the pandemic, there's been a ban on bringing food to inmates and visitors are still not allowed on the compound. Monroe says while officials are still reviewing these restrictions, they plan to introduce a pilot program that will allow virtual visitation. The prison is uh, a very particular place where if there's an outbreak in the prison, it would be very serious. I don't know that there are plans immediately to um, permit face-to-face -face visitation. I know that we are working at a pilot program to permit video visitation, visitation virtually. And of course, um, if that works out, this will permit even longer term, for instance, persons who may be in Grand Bahama and have people incarcerated or in one of the family islands to still be able to visit through this method without all of the expense of coming to the capital to see their loved one. And so we are looking at piloting a program for that and it should be up and running. It's also going to permit lawyers to visit virtually their clients. We still have to be careful about COVID in this time. Well, if you've got a news tip or if you've seen news in the making, call the Ion News Hotline at 397-6397. We also invite you to send your letters to the editor for publication on all of our social media platforms at Eyewitness News Bahamas at gmail.com. We're just getting started in Eyewitness News tonight, but when we come back, one woman is hoping to receive the gift of sight this Christmas. We've got her story when we come back. And later, music lovers, there's an exciting event planned just for you. We'll tell you all about it right after this. But first, here's a check on tonight's weather forecast. Super fast extreme internet bundle for only $99.99 with 157 channels and 150 megabits of speed per second, and your home will be blazing all year long. This Christmas, make it BTC, it's the better choice for you and me. Move to the rhythm of Christmas, move to the rhythm of BTC. Hey! <laughs> Bahamas Medical Earth is the GE Healthcare distributor. Four Terrace is our healthcare partner. Um, we specialize in everything G offers from MRI, CAT scan, X-ray, ultrasound, monitoring equipment, anesthesia, CNAM. In the Bahamas, we have a high rate of breast cancer and without a piece of equipment such as the Pristina, the detection rate will be lower, forcing our population to go to other countries to actually get healthcare. Last year, we couldn't celebrate Christmas as we wanted to. So for this year, we had everything planned. 100,000 watts of lights, 10-foot tall tree, best table ever, custom t-shirts, DJ, and we also had Uncle Billy, who forgot the KFC in the car with the keys inside. Get back! With KFC Junkin' Omega Pack combos, you can enjoy the holiday season this year no matter what. Savor this Christmas with Junkin' Omega Packs, only at KFC Nassau. KO Productions and Hennessy presents Blackout! Blackout! The finale! Coming to Climax Your Night Bahamas! It's one of the top dancehall artists out of Jamaica! It's Cranium! You better hold your partner tight, especially when he performs a big tune like this! And it hits like this. Get your tickets now. See you this Saturday, December 18th, as Hennessy and KO end history with a bang. Hennessy reminds you.
remind you to drink responsibly. Cash and Goes Mobile Wallet. With the Cash and Goes Mobile Wallet, you can sign up and conduct business using Sand Dollar. Transfer funds to your bank account within the mobile wallet, pay utility bills, BAF premiums, and BTC or live top up, as well as purchase gift cards. Send money to anyone nationally and cash out at select stores. Download the mobile wallet from the Apple App Store or Google Play Store today. Cash and Goes Mobile Wallet. Easy, simple, safe, and secure. This portion of the news is brought to you by J.S. Johnson Insurance Agents and Brokers, giving you peace of mind. We're looking at live pictures tonight over the Capitol, where the temperature is right around 77 degrees with an expected dip to 73. This is Eyewitness News. Welcome back. Well, the final decision on whether or not the Christmas Carnival will be allowed to operate after resubmitting their application is expected sometime this evening. The original application was denied after the carnival operators reportedly failed to respond to requests made by the Ministry of Health. The issue has since become a political one, with opposition members claiming that the governing Progressive Liberal Party was involved in the carnival. A letter was tabled in the Senate purportedly showing the Ministry of Finance giving permission to the PLP for the temporary importation of equipment and supplies for the carnival extravaganza. Well, today a similar letter has surfaced that granted the Free National Movement permission to import carnival equipment back in 2018. Government officials have explained that whatever governing party is in at the time, this matter comes before that party, respectively. Now for the latest on carnival and whether or not it will be allowed to operate, log on to all of our social media platforms or ewnews.com. Over well, the debate on whether or not Christmas Carnival will still be open brewing, a government reformer tonight says the debacle has shown the need for greater transparency in government. This as the carnival was reportedly given the green light to open by the prime minister, but days later it was announced that it was not given the proper approval by the Ministry of Health. Matt Albury, he's the executive director of the Organization for Responsible Governance, says this issue has gone on with little scrutiny, something that he says needs to stop. It has gleaned uh, a different level of, of scrutiny because of the uh, focus of, of COVID and, and health precautions. But as it as it's looked at, other elements of what has always just been done also start to come out. And and I don't think that reflects the the expectation of the Bahamian public at this point of governance. Uh, there's a greater interest in transparency. There's a greater interest interest in accountability, and and so. Uh, some of these questions are being asked and, and, you know, at different parts, both the past administration and current administration are providing responses. The, the, the public is having questions as to, you know, is this the, are these processes the same for everyone or is it different by affiliation to a political party? Well, Aubrey adds that this is now reflecting a bad light on business in the Bahamas, as he says, procedures seems to have allegedly not been followed. He maintains tonight that Bahamians must hold governments accountable so that an issue such as this is never allowed to be repeated. There's going to be questions about, you know, is, is the affiliation with the parties moving this thing along? Does it hit all the, uh, the recommended accounts or what needs to be looked at for bringing an event here? The levels of permits, the, the customs uh, uh, that, that are being, uh, um, that are being uh, waived. Is, is, that, is that consistent with what we're doing with other spaces? And that, that builds, that builds a, a credibility, not only locally, but also internationally, right? We, we want to present that this is uh, a place where we do things effectively and efficiently. And, and the amount of attention and the public involvement in, on this one issue doesn't reflect us at our best. 
Well, a woman tonight is asking for help in hopes of regaining her sight before the new year. Our Francesca Brown has her story tonight. While most of us are expecting the latest gadgets or fashion for Christmas, 42-year-old Anissa Munnings has a different gift in mind. All she wants for Christmas is to regain her sight. After being diagnosed with renal disease in 2018, she lost her sight a year later. After thinking she would have to live the rest of her life blind, she has now been given a second chance to see. However, she cannot afford the surgery. I had two issues cataracts and detached retina. About a month ago, I had the cataracts removed. Now I have to have the retina reattached in order for me to see again. But I don't have the funds to get the second surgery. The procedure will cost around $14,000. She explains what regaining her sight means to her. Then I'll get my independence back. Before I ended up getting sick, I was prepared to open up my business and just rock up in. But I ended up getting sick, and that's my dream, to open up my restaurant and just to be, to have the fun time I used to have with my daughter before all of this happened. She says the past two years have been a struggle. For the past two years and some months, it's been very hard. My sister could tell you I, I didn't so use my independence and to have that taken away from me. And not being able to see my daughter graduate. I've been there for all of her graduation. But when she graduated from high school, I wasn't able to be there because I couldn't see anything. Now Manning says she hopes to have the surgery done as soon as possible. Here's how you can help. Um, the bank information is BOB. Um, the branch number is 195. The account number is 5510104045. That's the account number for Anissa Munnings. Or you can contact her at 556-2091. Sanchesca Brown, Eyewitness News. Well, if you're a lover of music from all genres and a supporter of the arts, one local group has an exciting evening planned just for you. Adventure in the Arts is a night of edutainment. This according to the show's producer, Dr. Dion Cunningham, who says the event will feature several Bahamian performers from various art forms. Now, he says back in 2016, the event started as a way to fund his education and to reach the next generation of Bahamian artists. But he says today, five years later, it has turned out into so much more. I have to say that it's, it's, it's really about the the outreach, the opportunity to teach, the opportunity to entertain, but also the opportunity to provide something that is transformative and unique within the Bahamian context. Some have compared it to a Broadway show, some have compared it to a, an oral museum of sorts, um, but I simply, I, I simply like to refer to it as transformative. You will leave the event not only thoroughly entertained, but you will leave with a new perspective um, and new thoughts new appetites may be stimulated in certain art forms that you may not have realized were there before. Now Cunningham says the work for the show began months ago with a team of writers and now has evolved into a night of film and live elements. Now he says that the final pieces are beginning to come together in rehearsal. The only thing he can tell you is to attend. I can tell you that we have a wonderful cadre of not only artists but collaborators. We have, for instance, Alan Pacino Wallace, who's a visual artist in our community, but also we have international artists like Daphne Lynn Ricky uh, Flagg from Dance Theater of Harlem and Collage Dance Collective in Tennessee, but also known quantities like Rashad Cunningham, um, Danielle Lee, wonderful soprano. The event is this coming Friday and Saturday, both evenings. It starts at 7.30 p.m. Uh, tickets are $35 for adults, $20 for kids, and uh, you can receive tickets by reserving at 448-0985, or if you so prefer, you can pick up directly at the venue Christ Community Church or Island House. 
Well, still to come in Eyewitness News tonight, our Devontae Hanna, he's in the cooking lab with some sweets and treats right in time for Christmas. Also, we have a donation from Family Guardian right after this. Comfort. Tradition. Celebration. Joy. Memories. And love. for and protect the ones you love. However, life can present unexpected challenges. Who you call in times of need matters. Insurance Management is a Bahamian owned company that has been serving our community for over 40 years, offering a wide range of coverage for all of your personal, professional, and commercial needs. When life happens, rest easy knowing that our skilled and experienced agents are there for you in your time of need so that you can get back to what matters most. Insurance Management. Nobody does it better. Once upon a time, not too far away, CBS Bahamas was born. The year was 1973, and CBS stood before the Bahamas with the promise of becoming the nation's one-stop shop for home building and improvement, from bathroom nuances to paint, windows, doors, and kitchen cabinets. CBS was quickly crowned king by its customers. CBS Bahamas is one of the country's leading home centers and your proud one-stop shop when bringing your new home to life. CBS is a leading supplier and installer of architectural building products, ready to equip your home with the perfect windows and doors. CBS's goal is to make your life and home build stress-free so you can live happily ever after in the palace of your dreams with impeccable quality and a price match guarantee. Feel empowered to live happily ever after with CBS. Build beautiful. Michael, Michael, let me borrow your car, please. Don, I tell you I have to get my car license. How oh, long I can take, man? It's good enough. Why do you need my car so bad? It's old schoolmate, man. She'll meet her for lunch. Well, I hope she's taking you somewhere nice because you know we ain't easily impressed. impressed. You can pay for your license and inspections online now. They'll confirm your inspection appointment and bring the decal to your car. I'm impressed. <laughs> This segment of the news is presented by SANS, the truly Bahamian beer. Welcome back. Well, if there's one thing that Santa loves, it's a warm batch of cookies and a tall glass of milk. For day three of our 12 days of Christmas, our Devontae Hannah joins me live in studio tonight with some sweet treats. Devontae, what do you have for us? Oh, Janae, you are right. But the question is, are you naughty or are you nice? Because Santa Claus is making a list and he's checking it twice. But before he brings you that gift, he needs to get that one from you. And it's his milk and his cookies. And on Christmas Eve, if you don't have the perfect cookies, the cookie caterer showed us exactly how you can do that. That's the start of making Santa's favorite part of dropping off gifts, the cookies. Holiday M&M's, our winter ginger, Christmas sugar, eggnog snickerdoodle, and then of course the eggnog cream cheese stuffed ginger cookies. 
Yeah. Owner of the cookie caterer, Greg Cauley, says the business began in his private kitchen, and now they make up to 700 cookies per day and using about a thousand eggs. We just had a Facebook page at the time. That's where we got our customers from. And over time, as it grew, we decided to open a location, the first location on Mount Royal Avenue in 2018. And that was six years after I started baking from home. Um, and after that, the following year, we opened the Kamaika location in December. And then this location we're at now at Prince Charles was opened last year. His offerings, he says, has expanded tremendously with dozens of flavors and even ice cream. But Kali says, milk and cookies aside, the company's impact is what he's most proud of. Not only being able to provide for my family, but creating opportunities for people to provide for their families. Like I said, we have about 11 full-time staff, and so that's 11 families we uh, provide opportunities um, to make money from. But if you want to be sure how to please St. Nick, what exactly do you need for the best cookies? Is it the sprinkles, the cream cheese, or the M&Ms? Collie says none. Love. A lot of love. Um, <clears throat> creativity. Um, you need some creativity. Um, and like I say, what, what started this business was being sweet mode, you know what I mean? Having a good taste for great cookies or great holiday flavors. With that knowledge, I had to put my hands to the test to see if I'd be getting any gifts this year. All right, so now we're going to do some eggnog snickerdoodle cookies. And what this dough is, this dough consists of uh, rum. So that's some rum in it. You know, Bahamas love rum. So we have a rum flavor in it. It has the actual alcohol, it'll bake off during the baking. The main flavor of it is nutmeg. That's the main flavor that you have in the egg now. And so it has a hint of nutmeg, some uh, cinnamon, and then so that's what this egg now dough consists of. <laughs> Well, I did bring some cookies back to the office, but up to news time, the team ate them all. I'm so sorry, Jenea. But if you need help in getting those cookies ready for Santa next week, head on to the Cookie Caterers website and check out their cookie boxes. Tell them Devontae sent you. Once again, I'm Devontae Hanna. Back to you, Jenea. Thanks so much, Devontae. Well, I certainly didn't get any cookies. Hopefully, I can get some for Christmas. When we come back in Eyewitness News tonight, a local company makes a major donation to the Technical and Vocational Institute. We've got that story straight ahead. It's time to save with a new perspective, where the focus is on values and principles, and people are just as important as profit. Where we believe in democracy and equality and your vote counts. Where profits are shared with our members, who are also our owners, to ensure that by working together, we all win. Where education of our members and training our staff are one of our highest priorities. Where we serve our members' needs through continued cooperative initiatives because of our concern for the communities in which we live. Join more than 40,000 Bahamians who have made the smarter choice. Join the movement. Join a credit union. People helping people to help themselves. Who is Cardo? Well, legend has it. While lying in the hot Bahamian sun, he came up with the idea for the perfect rum blend. Then, with rum in hand, he journeyed through the islands of the Bahamas, where he met the Chick Charney, caught a blue marlin with his bare hands. He gave your Grammy her Johnny Cake recipe, found Tingham in the bush. Caro was known to put the rake in rake and scrape, and he swam with mermaids. Who is Caro? He's uniquely Bahamian. Dr. Daniel Johnson and the medical arts team at Foot and Ankle International is pleased to provide convenient and low-cost specialist services with the new Foot Care RX satellite clinics now available on New Providence at the Prescription Parlor Pharmacy on Carmichael Road and in Freeport, Grand Bahama at the Medical Pavilion at number 6 East Sunrise Highway. Addressing conditions of the diabetic foot, Achilles tendonitis, bunions, calluses, corns, hamatoes, heel spurs, and ingrown toenails are among our specialties. We provide standard specialist care in world-class facilities at rock-bottom rates. 
Experiencing challenges with your feet, ankle, or legs? Call or WhatsApp our team at 242-827-9908 or email us at fixmyfeetbahamas at gmail.com to book your appointment. Get ready to enter limping and walk out pimping. Foot Care Rx, convenience and affordability. Christmas wishes still come true with a little help from Bank of the Bahamas. Deck the halls this Christmas with the lowest consumer loan rates in the Bahamas. Celebrate and save money by switching to a BOB mortgage or consolidate debt to lower your monthly payments. And for the grown-up kids, BOB offers great rates and terms to make your dream car affordable. Celebrate and save this Christmas with BOB, your bank of solutions. You're watching Eyewitness News. Welcome back. Well, Family Guardian making a significant donation of $10,000 to the Bahamas Technical and Vocational Institute for Equipment and an internship program which is set to launch in January of next year. The president of Family Guardian, Glenn Ritchie, telling Eyewitness News the donation was given as the company believes in creating opportunities for individuals to thrive in their media program. We are so pleased to be able to provide support to BTVI for the furtherance of their media program and we are equally excited to partner with them on the continuing education of their students through proposed internships with Family Guardian. These internships will allow the students to work alongside our team gaining real life work experience toward the completion of their certifications. This donation today is no different and represents an investment in the future of these students, which speaks to the heart of Family Guardian's corporate giving strategy, which is to make a difference in the communities where we work and where we live. Meantime, the president of BTVI, Dr. Robert Robinson, asserting that the donation by Family Guardian will be instrumental in helping the institution launch its media technology program come next month. He adds that the school is seeing a record number of students seeking to enroll in BTVI's media program. And so he says this donation will help officials ensure that the program is up and running with the necessary equipment for the next year. Your generous donation of $10,000 will go towards audio, radio, and television equipment for our students. Under the chairmanship of the uh, HOD for that area, Mr. Delano Archer. Further, we're grateful for the internship opportunities for our students. You're investing in bright futures. You are providing students with affordable excellence and the opportunity to learn a trade and earn a living. Well, tonight the giveaways continue with our 12 days of Christmas and our lucky winner tonight is Lisa Charlton. She wins a facial from P3 Parlor. Congratulations to Lisa. Now you can log on and win by clicking on our social media platforms. Send us a photo of how you celebrate the holidays and hashtag EWN 12 Days of Xmas. Be sure to participate tomorrow for one of our prizes. We have so much more to give away up until Christmas. That wraps up news this Wednesday. But coming up and beyond the headlines with Shanique Miller, we've got a look at all of today's hot topics that's coming up and beyond the headlines that starts right after this. That does it for us here at Eyewitness News. It's certainly been a pleasure having you in our company tonight. On behalf of the entire news team, I'm Janae Noel saying good night and be safe, everyone.
Merry Christmas from the Ministry of Education and Technical and Vocational Training. Here's what Christmas means to staff members and their hope for 2022. Christmas is a time for us to give, show love. This is the time for caring and sharing. My hope, my hope is that we can actually move forward and we can move, move forward in times of struggles knowing that we came out of adversity better. That's my hope for 2022. Oh, Christmas to me is such a wonderful time. Christmas to me means love, laughter, life, caring, sharing. It's important to spend time. We learn so much just through communication, through conversation, be it casual or more formal events. So just don't forget to take that time to talk to them, play with them. Hi, my name is Marv Cunningham, Global Brand Ambassador for the House of Angostura, and I'd like to welcome you to Mixing with Marv, brought to you by Caribbean Wines and Spirits, where we'll be showing you how to make your favorite cocktails with the House of Angostura. So our next featured highball is Angostura 7, paired with Angostura LLB. What I love about Angostura 7, this rum can be enjoyed neat, on the rocks, or with your favorite mixer, the honey, Toffee and caramel notes definitely do come through and elevate whatever it is mixed with. And what is Angostura LLB? Angostura LLB is a sweet lemon lime soda with intricate flavor profiles of Angostura aromatic bitters. So we're going to get this highball started by adding some ice to our highball glass. We will be adding two ounces for this highball. If you're at home, remember to always drink moderately and responsibly. And we're going to top off with Angostura LLB. And we're going to give this a gentle stir. This highball is excellent by itself, just alone. But if you want to elevate it, if you want to jazz it up, if you want to elevate it and take it up a notch, I highly recommend that you add four dashes of Angostura Aromatic Bitters on top. Cheers. This has been Mixing with Marv. For more information on the House of Angostura, please visit cwsbahamas.com. And remember to always drink responsibly. The Big Bang Holiday Series is back Saturday, December 18th at 7 p.m. No, no, Virtually no, 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 no. nationwide. $30,000. Yeah. Here's how to play. Log on to your I'm in Luck account and click on the Big Bang tab to register and participate in the live event. Ensure you have data on your smart device. Tune in to I'm in Luck.com, Cable 224, Flow TV 112, Facebook Live, Instagram Live, or YouTube at 7 p.m. Watch and listen for a video call for your chance to win a share of an estimated two million in cash and prizes. Island Luck. Winners live here. Island Luck reminds you that it's only a game, so game responsibly. 
Introducing the new Slices and Sticks from Little Caesars, an unexpected combination. Four slices of pepperoni pizza, eight Italian cheese sticks, and one crazy sauce, only for $9. Didn't expect that one, right? Grab the new Slices and Sticks at Little Caesars Oatsfield, Carmichael Road, or East Street South in the Pineapple Plaza. That's four slices of pepperoni pizza, eight Italian cheese sticks, and one crazy sauce, all for only $9, and only at Little Caesars. Pizza, pizza. Here's to all the early morning breakfasts. To the last minute surprises and a new friend for life. The year the sparks flew and we said, I do. Here's to the biggest table on the street when family and friends come together. Milo Butler, your neighborhood store, a family tradition. To win a relay, each team member must do his or her part in the race. If one member drops the baton, it impacts all of us. Across our ages, genders, abilities, nationalities, cultures, or religions, we are all on the same team, and we all have a role to play in getting to the finish line to win the race against COVID-19. Don't drop the baton on safety. Wear your mask over your mouth and nose. Keep at least three feet distance from others, do not touch your face, and wash or sanitize your hands often. Together, we will win. In your time of need, allow our family to serve yours. Serenity Funeral Home and Crematorium, committed to providing more than just a funeral or cremation service, but a healing experience for your family. Serenity Funeral Home and Crematorium, the compassionate funeral directors at Serenity Funeral Home and Crematorium, LLC, provide individualized funeral services designed to meet the needs of each family. Our staff of dedicated professionals is available to assist you in making funeral service arrangements. From casket choices to funeral floral flowers, we will guide you through the aspects of the funeral service. We invite you to contact us with your questions 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. 153 Blue Hill Road, directly opposite BPL. 242-565-0004, 242-356-4400. The thoughts, views, and comments expressed by the hosts, guests, and callers on Beyond the Headlines are not necessarily those of management, ownership, or production unit of the Verizon Media Group. Beyond the Headlines is a production of ILTV Studios and cannot be reproduced or represented in part or entirety without express written permission of the Verizon Media Group. Beyond the Headlines is the intellectual property of the Verizon Media Group. Copyright 2021. Alive, still connected, still with you. The Omicron COVID-19 strain continues to put government officials around the world in a tough spot in regards to reimposing some school and business restrictions as a fourth wave of the COVID-19 virus appears to be spreading quite rapidly. Several colleges and schools in Canada have closed due to Omicron. We hear from a Bahamian in Canada tonight on the challenges she's now facing. Also this evening... The Singing Bishop is here to talk about his Christmas Give Back initiative and later, all you need to know about decorating for the holidays. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to Beyond the Headlines. I'm Shanique Miller. University officials across several provinces in Canada have stopped all in-person classes immediately after a surge in cases, including the new Omicron variant. The cases have surged to the point that students, lecturers and university officials feel it's best to put safety first. Here's how the numbers are looking. The United States is experiencing an uptick in cases, and now education officials there are going back to the drawing board. While in the United Kingdom, the BBC is reporting increases in the UK as well. Increases that have officials asking, will schools have to close again in January? 
Well, joining me to talk about how things are playing out in Canada and what it means for so many Bahamian students is Anushka Garakapathy, a third-year student at Queen's University in Ontario. Good evening to you, Anushka, and thank you so much for joining us uh, from, I think you're, in, you're still in Ontario or perhaps in, in Toronto, making your way back home to the Bahamas after classes were abruptly stopped. Please tell us what, what led to this. What are the numbers showing that caused your university officials to immediately put a stop to in-person classes? For sure. First of all, thank you for having me. Um, honestly, Canada was doing pretty well. I can speak for Ontario, especially coming um, going back to school in September. We were told with full confidence that once we were fully vaccinated, we were allowed back on campus. And uh, until I would say the end of November, it's very smooth sailing. I didn't have any COVID scares. We had safe social distancing protocols in place, mandatory mask protocols while we were in our lecture halls. Mm -hmm. The professors were at a safe distance and, and it actually worked pretty well. However, um, due to gov the government um, restrictions being loosened because of oh. the, the later cases, mm -hmm. public establishments and institutions were allowed to open, so bars and um, restaurants were able to open and because of fewer um, social distancing rules, lower mask regulatory um, regulations, students and um, other um, persons alike were being a little more relaxed. And I think that's what caused, I think in the was the main cause for the big um you're absolutely Rising. right. You're right, Anu, because the thing is, I understand that now Canada, including your university campus, um, has seen hundreds of new cases just in the last few days. Talk Within about a week, We were actually, so um, our classes ended about a week and a half ago, and we were supposed to go into exam season, and we were told with full confidence that we would be taking pers um, exams in person in this um, halls with proctoring and all of it on paper. Um, no, with social distancing, but it's pretty hard with like 500 people capacities in a in a hall. You can't really social distance. But they were told we were told with full confidence that it would go ahead. But within a week, with we were experiencing like 300, 400 cases a day. Um, a, a, day. Lot, a lot of it, a lot of it um, to be the Omicron variant as well. Mm -hmm. um, and because we're in such a like small space, there's a lot of students. There's residences, dorms you can't really social distance. So once one person has it, then it, it can spread very easily. So um, our school literally on Sunday night sent out an email and said we, that they were forced to cancel all in-person classes and exams um, for this year and that they would work with the professors to maybe find a new way to proctor our exams. And so as it stands right now, Anu, you and the, the rest of the student population at Queen's University can't even determine when you're gonna take your finals. Not really. So some professors are um, trying their best to make it online, to make it easier for people if they're traveling or just because a lot of people are in isolation um, due to having COVID or being in close contact with persons. But there's some professors that are older who don't necessarily have the experience with um, technology as much or don't believe in giving online exams. And they're being forced to um, just evaluate us based on what we have before. Um, it's left a lot of people who may have had travel plans unsure of what they need to do. People who already had um, prior plans and engagements have to now change it due to um, like on the spur of the moment exams being um, scheduled. Now, I understand that Queen's University, where you are at, doesn't necessarily have a huge Bahamian population, but you have Bahamian friends at other universities and other provinces that have also had to stop classes immediately. Tell us about that. Yeah, um, I've heard quite a few who, same because of a quick rise in cases, have had to cancel classes immediately. And it's been a little uneasy. I mean, I was lucky enough that I have family close by who were able to drive up and pick me up. But with transportation, um, lack of, you know, the take, maybe plane tickets are too expensive. It's really hard to suddenly change your plans um, like this. I mean, students that are from Canada, you can easily, you know, pick up and leave and go back to school back to your house you know with no issues but international students you still have to go through testing and then there's the risk that you may have been exposed to the variant or COVID and then you're stuck for two weeks and then who knows how much longer after that so it's been a little tough for some of my friends for me I was lucky enough that so far the borders are still open and testing has been pretty good but that's still a challenge.
Yes. Now, I know that you are making your way back to the Bahamas this week. Are the, uh, your friends, the other Bahamian students at other universities making similar plans or, or what's happening I there? Think, I think so. I mean, so far we haven't heard any, there haven't been any restrictions from the government yet about the borders. I think they are, they're trying to um, discourage any non-essential travel as of now is what I read. But so far, there aren't any threats to the border being closer, closing, so there's not been a frantic rush to leave. But I think people are just trying to play it safe and leave before it gets any more any worse, which it seems to be. Well, I, I, you know, I'll tell you this. Canada was very strict for some time, as you very well know, because you've had to make so many changes in, in the last year and a half or two years. And now this. And so, I mean, I guess we're all hoping, including you all, that it doesn't get as strict as it was in terms of the border closing and, and the, for, year, for months at a time. Um, and and I, I, I just have to ride this out. Um, what is the general sense of how people are feeling, though? Students like yourself, who, who breathed a huge sigh of relief um, that you're back in class, you, you've, you've, you've followed protocols, got vaccinated, you know, all this stuff, and now here you are sort of back here again when you want to move forward and get some things accomplished and get some things done. Um, uh, what is the concern that you are gathering? I feel like it we're all a bit discouraged. I mean, I was personally in my freshman year when it got cut short because of COVID. And now in my junior year, it's been almost a year and a half with this. Um, it's been difficult trying to adjust to this new learning. I mean, the professors are trying their best, but they also have their own health concerns. So it's been a, a lot of um, not miscommunication, but on the spur of the moment judgment calls by professors and officials alike. And we have we are forced to adjust to these um, new regulations and restrictions. So it's a bit it's a bit hard. I mean, we don't have any choice, so we we make do with what we have. But we're just hoping that soon enough that it gets a little bit better. Yeah, I, I agree. Uh, we, we all do. And when you return uh, to the Bahamas, I mean, do you have any plans in terms of when you will return to Canada to finish school? Or are you playing it by air to see what happens? As of now, it's all based on what the school says. So, I mean, before this whole variant, we were told that um, January would be completely in person, that we would be back in full force. But now that this has happened, I think they're all reevaluating. So there's there's no um, way to say exactly when anyone's going to go back. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, Anushka, thank you very much for joining us from Ontario this evening here on Beyond the Headlines, giving us a first-hand view um, and response about universities and schools, in fact, public schools as well, closed throughout Canada as the, the, the COVID-19 virus is surging again. It's so unfortunate. And a number of students are, are in quarantine. Um, uh, everybody sent home. Exams stopped. Um, uh, and, and just as you heard uh, Anu just describing what's happening there in Canada um, um, and on her campus and many other campuses around in different provinces. Um, listen, stay safe um, and of course a safe flight back here to the Bahamas and, um, and, and we all are praying for the best outcome, certainly. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. My pleasure. When we come back, the singing bishop is here and like always, he is here to talk about his plans to help the community this Christmas. That and more after this. It was the night before Christmas in a sailboat with a rope but no tow. A girl found a magical starfish on the shores of Abaco. On Grand Bahama is where she landed, where she was led to a hibiscus enchanted. In Andrus, under the moonlight, she found a golden pine cone that glowed so bright. On to Nassau, where the cool breeze blew. The brightest feather was given from practice for Junkanoo. On to the islands Exuma, Ken Island, Long Island, and Inagua. She traveled to every island, rock, and key, till it was time to come home and unlock the mystery that although each island is different, we are all one. So she fulfilled her dream to light up Christmas for everyone. Dream big this Christmas. We are alive. 
Food security is a challenge for many. Now in a pandemic, many more are unsure of their next meal. Through their Feed 5000 program and a $20,000 donation, AML is working to ensure that everyone has a meal for the holidays. And they're inviting you to lend your support. From November 15th through December 17th, visit any Solomon's, Fresh Market, Domino's, and Exuma Markets in Georgetown to donate and help feed a family in need this Christmas. No amount is too small. Remember, we're all in this together. Once upon a time, not too far away, CBS Bahamas was born. The year was 1973, and CBS stood before the Bahamas with the promise of becoming the nation's one-stop shop for home building and improvement, from bathroom nuances to paint, windows, doors, and kitchen cabinets. CBS was quickly crowned king by its customers. CBS Bahamas is one of the country's leading home centers and your proud one-stop shop when bringing your new home to life. CBS is a leading supplier and installer of architectural building products, ready to equip your home with the perfect windows and doors. CBS's goal is to make your life and home build stress-free so you can live happily ever after in the palace of your dreams with impeccable quality and a price match guarantee. Feel empowered to live happily ever after with CBS. Build beautiful. It's smart. Cancer pushes us. We push back. Challenging conventional thinking. Finding smarter solutions. Like advanced genomic testing. A diagnostic tool that lets us see cancer at the molecular level. Then helps us find different ways to attack it. That's what makes CTCA one of the leaders in precision cancer treatment. We're not just fighting cancer. We're outsmarting it. Visit our website to learn more about advanced genomic testing. Since 1992, Caribbean Gas Storage and Terminal Limited have been a distributor of liquefied petroleum gas, commonly known as propane. With over 25 years experience in this business, customer service is our number one priority. We're readily available for delivery throughout the length and breadth of the Bahamas. We supply tanks of all sizes, residential, commercial, and industrial. We've got everything covered to your specifications. Opening a new business, upgrading an installation, and for all your cooling needs, check out our range of refrigerants. For you who don't want to come outdoors, our online payments are just for you. Visit us on www.caribbeangasstoragelimited.com. We accept all major credit cards. Our customer service office is located at our Gladstone Road retail sites. Office hours are 7 a.m. to 5 p.m. Monday through Saturday. Please contact us for exceptional services at 361-6007. This segment has been brought to you by CBS. Welcome back to Beyond the Headlines. It's great to have you tuned in this evening. Christmas is a time filled with cheer and laughter for many. However, that's not everyone's story. Many are still dealing with the financial and emotional fallout as a result of the pandemic and may not be in the ideal position this Christmas. Many are seeking assistance, particularly food assistance, considering the prices on the shelves that continue to increase and rise rapidly. Well, join me now to discuss that and really more uh, in particular to discuss what it is he's doing in response is singing Bishop Lawrence Roll. Good evening to you. Happy holidays. Welcome to Beyond the Headlines. It's awesome just to, to have this opportunity to sit and talk um, because you are somebody who's been doing incredible amounts of work for the average person out there and you have not let up this holiday season. In fact, you have already started. Yes. Thank you so much for having me on your show, and I'm telling you, it is something else out there. Unbelievable. Mm -hmm. Words cannot describe what is happening out there. This is real. I'm from out of Cat Island, and I never dreamed things like this would have been going on in this country. Mm -hmm. And it seemed like it wouldn't stop. I don't know whether to say last year was worse. Uh, this year seemed to be like 
It's a lot of young people. It's a lot babies. going on, Bishop. What is happening? The prices have increased at, in the stores, as you know. It's just so much, and people have not returned to work. If they have, it's there. They're underemployed. And so a lot's going on. In this week alone, just this week, you have seen um, um, every day more than a thousand people yeah, coming um, for, 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 for any number of things. Talk about that. I mean, to, just today, for example. Today, Shemik, oh my God. The pastor Rodney uh, Moxie, Mario, Mario Moxie, Mario Moxie mm -hmm. and his team did such an awesome work. I've never seen anything like that. People was all around that church. On my way coming, I see Blue Hill Road. I said, Jesus, Market Street, crowded with people with their little packages. And if you see the babies, unbelievable. Mm -mm. So you have you have women and men showing Mo up. Woman and men. And he appeared like, like these women have, have so many children. And I don't know where the man them is. But he, he appeared like from 2020, like a lot of men just went into drinking and playing dominoes. So they, they're trying to numb the reality of what's going on by, like you say, drinking yeah, and playing yeah, dominoes while the women out there it. seeking, trying to put food oh, on the plate, yes, food yes. On, the, on, their, on their tables. Yes. So what we into, we are trying to reach out to 5,000 hurting children mm -hmm. and family. Well, before we get there, because that's on Sunday. Yes. You, you're doing that. Listen, you all don't understand. This man, all week, in fact, from last week, but all week, uh, today is Wednesday. He did over a 1,000 today. Yesterday, he did sub a substantive amount. Monday, he did a substantive amount. You have become truly, you truly have become sort of known. Yeah, you perform, and we love it, and we have fun with it, et cetera. But more importantly, this is what you do. You are the voice of those who are frustrated and not financially able or prepared uh, for, for, for quite some time, not only in this season, it's just more pronounced now. Um, what, what, what has caused you to, I don't know, not only adopt the immediate community around your church, but Bahamians everywhere? Sister Jamik, when I was a little boy and I could not finish school, I come from humble beginning. And when you talk about being poor, I don't want to cry on your show today, but uh, the Lord appeared to me when I was about 17 and he said to me, you are going to feed people. And I said, feed. Even, even as you were hurting and poor. Yeah, yeah. I said, feed people. And I hungry too. I heard that when I was a little boy. And the thing about it, the Lord said, you must start now. My paycheck was like $14 a week. And there was a Kelly bakery years ago down the road. And... I stop at Purity Bakery and feed those men in those wheelchairs. And up to this day, the people what we fed, and people see them on Facebook, I have a different crew who live in those abandoned houses. Like the man who at Clara's a band building there, mm -hmm. who sits in the grass, mm -hmm. I feed him too. Mm. We feed people who live in those buildings, no trespass then, and the lowest of the lowest. And these people are crying out, say, help us, mm -hmm. help us, help us. It's unbelievable. The feeding homes and all need help. Good Samaritan need help. Mm -hmm. Unity House need help. I'm telling you, I've never seen anything like this. Now, what people don't know, um, and, and, and perhaps many do, um, uh, but that you cook every plate of food. Now, I don't know if some people bring stuff to you Look prepared, here. which I'm sure, but you go and clean, <laughs> clean, cook, cut up, all that stuff, not in that, not in that order, but over a thousand pieces of chicken and all the rest of it, meaning those hundreds and hundreds of plates that are prepared to feed people each day. You cook that? Today, approximately nearly 1,500 to 2,000 plates pass through my hands on today. Who, and who prepared it? Well, who you think prepare it? I used to cook yesterday, I cleaned chicken all day yesterday, bake my potato bread, bake my cassava bread, cut, chop up my cassava, peel it, grate it. You ever see a pasta chop coconut? No, sir, I've never seen it. My child, that's climb coconut tree too, I forgot Hold to. on, do it's climb coconut, I no, need a I video. I gotta go get the dry once I gotta climb. I need a video. <laughs> I, <laughs> I, need, I need that to go viral. How about that? Oh, um, Lord. But the thing about it is, I mean, you, don't, you, don't you have a team by now? Because you've been doing this for years. You go and you slave. And, you, and by the way, you love to cook outside. Yes. And bake in the rain. In the rain. In the rain. And bake in the rock oven. In, yes, ma'am. I have never seen, let me tell you something. From 2020, distant to grill, the belly fallout. 
Now you know that some food, these grills then probably at least most 1,000 pans of cakes and except or more. The belly drop out two of my grills. Of the grills? Yes, ma'am. But that's because you use it obviously several oh, times, Lord several Jesus. times a day. Sweet. Having a team sister to make is one thing, but these people want money. Oh, so ain't nobody trying to help you clean no chicken my, if they ain't getting paid. What? Two, three hundred dollars a week for a person? My paycheck a week is about two grand a week. For people to for help you? And if you don't pay them, they would sit in the church yard and say, I want my money. And go live. And you, cause you know, that's what we do. We know we go live when, you know, um, <laughs> the singing Bishop Omi, I clean all that chicken. That's right. And he getting all this money. That's and right. he, cause that's, you know, that's what, that's obviously what people feel and yes, think. Yes, um, you know, going back to a more serious issue that you mentioned a moment ago about how people are hurting and how you're seeing the, the increase in numbers, the increase. women and men, particularly women, single mothers coming with their children. What would you say to people who are feeling so heavy? this holiday season, um, you know, it's a time of cheer and merriment and all the rest of it, but, but you, can't, you cannot overlook the fact that so many people are, are depressed. People are on the ground, Shamik. I tell you, the pride is gone. The pride is gone. Ain't like once ago, our Bahamian people once had pride and you were scared to carry a plate of food in here. Not today. The pride is gone. Mother on the line, father on the line, grandma on the line, grandpa on the line, babies on the line. Today I see mothers with their little young babies. I see them, I see sometimes they put them food in the baby trolley. Mm. I see some things. I shake my head. For the people that turn out in that place today, it's unbelievable. Sunday evening, mm -hmm. four o'clock, that door will be black for people. Now, what are you, what's happening on Sunday evening? Sunday evening will be attempting we in, before the end of this year, we are trying to reach out like 5,000 hurting children with parents. So Sunday evening, we go going to be there. And I'm telling you, God has been a good provider. I don't know how we do it. You're looking at spending like five to $10,000 every Monday and Tuesday. Each? Yes. My accounts, them, if you could find a dollar, you're blessed. Sometimes I tell the people, put a couple dollars on the book. When they go and check, not a dollar. Blood clog. My stress come. Not a bit, a lot of noise. Once I see, like, tomorrow, 500 to 600 people come in there. Mm -hmm. And I see no way out. All of a sudden, I feel this pain just pitch inside of me before that's, you know it's blood clogs. Oh, oh, the, you said blood clogs. Blood clog. Oh, Over 600 blood clogs come to me. Oh, my God. That's the, that's the way your yeah. body reacts to the stress. Yes, Monday, blood clog come out of my neck and my back. Blood clogs was coming out of my, out of my body from I was about 25. Oh, that's how, you're, that's how stress reacts stress, to your body. It, yes. So you feel the pains the going pain. through your body. How do you, but how do you, listen now, you know, we, we, the, we, the country, appreciate what it is you do. And, and, but how do you handle your own stress? And Because and obviously this is so important to you. You are stressed when the funds aren't there, when you can't meet maybe a, part, a particular quota that was set. How do you manage your own stress? Well, I have so much to rejoice for and give God praise, to be honest with you. I can't tell you the last time I had personal stress, but I got people stress. Because every time I would come down naturally to myself, I have a good marriage, married for, married for over 30 years, got seven children. My children them look older than me. Oh, I just oh, had a baby oh. grand girl born yesterday. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, uh -huh. <laughs> yes youth renewed. So I, I'm yes. telling you, I don't have a problem. Uh -huh. I will not lie to you. Yeah. But oh, the people. The people that you take they on. They call and they come and, oh Lord, you don't understand. One come the other day, I think he had a rope. He said he was going to commit suicide. I had to take the rope from the individual. And let's you, go on. You, you took the literal rope from yeah, him? Yeah, the literal rope from the woman. From the woman? From her. Uh, yeah. So sometimes they be uh, up underneath the, uh, her banner and all that sort of stuff. This is for real. My heart. Go I don't know why I love these people so much. Why do you? I don't know. I, I just don't know. I would give them my clothes off my back. Oh. I gave them all my cars. Hummer. About four or five Mercedes Benz. Mm -hmm. BMW. Mm -hmm. I give away a Rolls voice. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Come on, Bishop. You used use the plug. <laughs> Bishop, what, how are you managing to, to afford to feed in excess 
of 1,500 people on Sunday coming, and, and, by, and eventually 5,000. It's going to be a whole, it's going to be a whole lot of money you have to spend. BTC fed them on last week or so. This is nothing to play with. On Saturday morning, I'll be packing box from morning until around 7 o'clock Saturday evening. Boxes with little sweet treat stuff and all the cakes that we will order. We talking, but what they seen on Facebook cannot be compared when you hit there. The people from Sis Church, from Pastor Mark Moxie Church, mm -hmm. uh, when they said they coming with two or three hundred, I said, look here, that those stuff ain't gonna last. And the day they see something, they was like, what? This is real. This is mega. Mm -hmm. This is huge. Mm -hmm. All. Yesterday I was preparing all day, day, day. I was cooking and, and preparing while service going on. My, I got pots. Sometimes I deal with like 10 to 15 different you, pots you and cakes. On, you cook on that scale? Yes. And bake on that scale? Big pots. Well, I'll tell you this. The Italia Bahamas Foundation heard about what you're doing. Yes. And I think that they are also stepping up to assist you with your effort on Sunday. Uh, yeah, loose they are, loose. Yes, they are very, very happy to, to, to just partner with you and help it help make it happen on Sunday. Thank God for you. You have always been a great Bahamian woman in this country. And you don't know what you was doing to people you as a news anchor lady. Oh, Many you. times I watch you. And one thing I can say with your program, it's so real, it is truthful. I watch you. Thank you very much. I know you watched a few times when I did the other show. Uh, I, I won't call that today uh, or this evening, but um, I, I thank you. I thank you. But I'm yes, happy that they, they heard about you. Um, you so you've, you've been busy uh, for years. And obviously your name is out there of, having, of being this, this wonderful man that really genuinely cares and doesn't look for anything in return. No, no, and no, they no, heard no. about you um, all the way across the waters wow. and decided that they want to take help, help so you on, help you on so Sunday. Um, by the way, though, even though the Italia Bahamas Foundation is stepping in. Are you still accepting donations? How can people reach out to you to donate to help, whether it's clothing, food, um, all that we, stuff? We need everything. You know, I used to tell them, because the grill belly was dropping out, bring rocks so the coal can't drop out. But we need help. Like, like Sunday come in, tomorrow I'm going to start preparing the kids' stuff. We need help. You don't need to tell you no lie. I've never seen it. The clothes was piled up in that church today. Those clothes is gone. You're looking at probably, oh, but at least five to 600 bags of clothes. Those clothes are gone hmm. for the many people. If you see the young Bahamian women, the matter of fact, coming out, they up underneath this Habana, sorting out clothes. Sort out young mothers, yes, uh -huh. their pride gone. This is real. If God don't intervene for us, what will become to us in the next couple of years? My God. We can't pay for like this. Mm -mm. My, my, my. I want people to come in to teach those young people and help them. My heart goes out for them. Mm. Uh, you know what? I need to have you back on. Um, um, I'm going to have you back on because, like you said, it, it, this, this wonderful extension mm. and, and help is good. But also now, how do you empower yeah, and change yeah, the yeah, mindset? Yeah, yeah. Um, because, because you know, that, that is where true, yes. true help comes in. Yes. When you can try change people's, the way we think yes. and that yes. kind of thing. Yes, yes, This is not healthy. No, no it isn't. Uh, Bishop Roll, I thank you very much for uh, pairing with us yes, on Beyond the Headlines this evening. Yes, um, and also, um, great success on Sunday yes, with what it is you're doing. And I yes. know you have many things planned yes. between now and yes. then. Yes. Um, yes. But certainly, of course, on Sunday, we look forward to seeing thank a lot of it so as well. Much. Thank yes. you so much. Yes, sir. Yes, yes sir. Man. When we come back, all you need to know to decorate your home or your business this Christmas, right after this on Beyond the Headlines. Have you heard? Absolute Comfort Air Conditioning and Refrigeration is open in the Bonded area. Two doors down from Epic Battery. We do services, repairs, and sell units and other supplies. We cater to residential, commercial, industrial, and even turnkey projects. No job is too big or too small. Call Absolute Comfort at 602-1029 or 809-9178. Turn to Absolute Comfort when your comfort counts. 
The Big Bang Holiday Series is back Saturday, December 18th at 7 p.m. No, no, Virtually nationwide. $30,000. Yeah. Here's how to play. Log on to your I'm in Luck account and click on the Big Bang tab to register and participate in the live event. Ensure you have data on your smart device. Tune in to I'm in Luck.com, Cable 224, Flow TV 112, Facebook Live, Instagram Live, or YouTube at 7 p.m. Watch and listen for a video call for your chance to win a share of an estimated two million in cash and prizes. Island Luck. Winners live here. Island Luck reminds you that it's only a game, so game responsibly. Welcome back to Beyond the Headlines. Well, looking forward to decorating your home or business this Christmas, but need some inspiration or maybe just some help on where do you start, how to get it done. This segment is just for you. I'm joined in studio by designer Mona Lisa Fowler. And Mona Lisa, you have some incredible, wonderful, like this right here is just so awesome. I'm going to hold it up, guys. Look at it. Just yeah, take a look. Okay, the it's, oh, 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 the bow's <laughs> at the bottom. But Charles, she just don't want me messing nothing up. <laughs> this is so rich and so beautiful. And so you're, you're saying something just as simple as this, which is not quite simple, but you understand what I mean. Just this can make a difference in a room. Yes, yes. I, I often tell people, of course, work with your own budget. Mm -hmm. You know, um, Christmas time, because we get so caught up with the festivities, we kind of go overboard. All of our January and February money <laughs> goes, <laughs> go into goes this straight scene. into Christmas. Mm -hmm. But... Um, it, it can become very costly, and I can tell you that I go crazy. My family tell people that I'm Christmas crazy all the time. Well, um, I can imagine your spa like the spaces in your home. Like, yes. just, like, I'm sure there's a theme for this area, a theme for that. You know, some people do that and go overboard yes. in that area. Yes. My, my family has gotten used to that. So, like I said, they call me the Christmas crazy. But I always tell people to, what I need them to remember is don't go over the size of your space. If you have a small space, then get a small tree. They have so many different trees now. You have the big, fat, the, fluffy oh God, ones. If you don't have the wonderful high ceilings, there's no way <laughs> your tree should just be all like, yes, no, no, yes. be realistic. Be realistic, yeah. Describe um, then what we have here. These are so beautifully done and all different and quite <laughs> unique, these, these wonderful holiday wreaths. So let's just walk through them. Okay. Oh, this, nice. one, this one is deco mesh. And you have a lot of people that have kids in their homes or have stores. So this is beautiful for, for um, something of that nature. Um, so like you, a business, the door for yes. business, or like if you have a big space in the office on the wall yes. somewhere? Yes, oh. this, this will do wonders. Uh, Bo always offsets everything. Um, and like I said, this is deco mesh. It's definitely pocket friendly because you can do so much with so little mm -hmm. because it fluffs. Once mm -hmm. you start yeah. to unroll, it just yeah. curls and yeah. does all sorts of things. Mm -hmm. um, so this is, this is normally the go-to for persons. The one that you held up would be more um, traditional executive style for executive offices or for like double doors. Um, you know, something of that nature. A lot of glitter always works. Mm -hmm. Glossy ribbon. I like it too. Um, like I see some poinsettias. Mm -hmm. I see like the wonderful cranberries, mm -hmm. the gold uh, balls, all that stuff. And of course, the red just pops, pops. And, the, and, the, and the gold it just mm -hmm. really, really makes this so outstanding and just so traditional Christmas. Yeah. So Hallmark Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And this. <clears throat> Uh, this is just a normal bow. Some people are very conservative, don't want too much fuss. I don't really like Christmas, but you know, mm -hmm. just for persons that come over for holiday dinner. So just a little bow, Mona Lisa. This? Um, this goes on doors as well. Yeah. This can go on doors. Like I said, some people don't want the fuss of wreaths. This can go on the gates. Some people have big gates. So this can go on your gates, stuff like that. So you can dial it down or you can go all the way up. So let's just talk about someone that want to create just a wonderful nook that's the, the, their Christmas sort of center in the home, right? Mm -hmm. How can they start? What are some of the things they can include in that area just to make it their own unique thing? That's something I didn't bring today, but you have it on your table, garland. Oh, okay. So you may, not, you may not have a space big enough for a Christmas tree. You can just get a string of garland. And I can tell you this, as far as our, um, our craft stores mm -hmm. and our home stores here, 
I've even had persons um, from abroad say to us, you, the, the flowers that you guys have and no, the ribbons awesome. are exquisite. Have, yes, And, yes. you know, I, I, I used to um, sometimes send um, flowers over to friends because they just don't have that luster. Mm -hmm. You know, they can't find it. Mm -hmm. So um, the, the garland, lights, always lights. So then the garland, which is this here in front of yes. our wonderful desk mm -hmm. here, right? And which is uh, like the, the pine Yes. Thick. Okay. And so you can just put some stuff on that, a ribbon, lights, yes. like you said, mm -hmm. maybe a nice bow, mm -hmm. a little, little uh, balls, and, and you're mm -hmm. good. Now, I can tell you this. I promise you I do not have a bow maker at home. I do this all just strictly by hand. Mm -hmm. And persons always look at it and say, I'm not going to put a bow because I just don't know how to do that. Mm -hmm. Go as simple as you can. Go as simple as you can. Don't, don't, you know, don't take it over the top when mm -hmm. you know you can't handle over the top. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so stay within your lane, mm -hmm. you know, and do something nice and small and always have your little strings here. Yes. You have the string that you have around across your garland. Yeah. And that lightens it up. And you know what's also so nice? Like, for example, this garland or mm -hmm. the, the, the cranberry bits that yes. you can just put, put in and weave in and out of mm -hmm. just makes it so festive and yeah. so lovely. Yeah. 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 And, um, Another tip, after the holidays, don't just throw them in a box. My ornaments are my babies. So you take good care of them yes. so, have, so, so, that, so that you stick within a budget for the next time? For the next time. People always say, oh, we're going to worry about that next year. But when next year come, you fall right back into the same regime because you have to now spend the same amount of money you just spent last year. I never do that. I have mm. um, proper packaging for all of my ornaments, okay. nice tissue paper. My glitter stays on my ornaments, my flowers. Everything is packed up. I always take my ribbon apart and roll it back up. Oh, you take that apart? Yes, ma'am. <laughs> See, yes, I see, do. There, see, the, you guys, there are some tips right there because, and that is good because that way, if you just need to maybe add one or two pieces, yes. that's what you do. But you have everything already set, yes, and you is. don't have to go and break the bank, exactly, all over again each Christmas to go and and, and decorate your space. And when you see this next year, I reincorporate this into something else. It looks like a totally different thing. Oh, okay. But so I mean, you know, I I being 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 a mom, um, a stay at home mom, I kind of. I really think for that, you know, so I have everything stacked up and they're labeled lights, um, my trees, my garland, everything is labeled and they have their own little nestle and they're tacked away properly. So once you see October rolls around, I always get my stuff together mm -hmm. early because I do everybody else's house. I, I, I was love, about to ask you, like, do you go and, and, and maybe do homes or businesses, etc.? cetera? Mm -hmm. um, you also provide that service? Yes, I do. I provide, my, my business provides a service where we have some persons who... They have their stuff. They just want me to come and put it up. They take everything out. I have some persons who said, listen, I don't want the hassle at all. I want you to pick up the tree, unpack my decor, decorate, come back after the holidays, take it down and take it out. So I do... I do everything. And don't be afraid to really just sort of make it your own unique thing, yes. eh? Like customize it. For yes. example, I saw a picture where this tree had um, uh, feathers mm. where the star would be. Yeah. Stuff like that. That's I call that a John Canoe Topper. Oh, what is get, it? I call that the John Canoe Topper. Oh. So you get all of what we call them picks. Mm -hmm. So you get all the picks and you have them at the top. You add the lights in them, and mm -hmm. it's it's whimsical, it's beautiful, it's magical. Yeah, where can we follow you on social media to see what you do, <laughs> and perhaps even inbox and say, hey, listen, you know what? I, I think I need your help. Now, I can tell you this. Um, this year has been the first year. My my One of my biggest supporters, my daughter, Renaya, she said, Mommy, listen, you're really, really good. You need to get this plugged in. So um, she thought about the name and everything. So I'm on the social media platforms as Creative Cottage 242. Say that slowly. Creative Cottage. <laughs> two creative four two. Cottage. Cottage? Yes, Cottage. Yes, 242. So Creative Cottage 242 um, on every so every um, platform. I'm get, she's, she's pushing me to do Facebook. I'm going to do Facebook, but I'm definitely on Instagram. I'm on TikTok. So you can find me on those two platforms. We're coming out there. So. Really, really good. And this stuff is really thank nice. You. And so, I mean, uh, thank you for coming and sharing and giving us some tips on how to make the make our homes yeah. um, just more festive. If it's just to do that, you know, yeah. sometimes yeah. it's just little things you can just do and add and, 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 and incorporate. And it makes such a big difference. A difference. Yeah. Thank you very, very much. Thanks You're for welcome. stopping by. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. Uh, when we come back, it's your BAF insurance tip and also a moment of inspiration from Mount Tabor Church.
He's sovereign over your mind, your mouth, your money, and your movement. He's sovereign. Ain't nobody want me to talk about the sovereignty of God. He is in charge. And when you come to know God in a real way and you want to live through, uh, to live out his will for your life, then you got to let this mind that was in Christ be also in you. Somebody clap your hands and say, yes, Lord. God created us to find our satisfaction and our fulfillment, watch this, in him and him alone. You walking around puffed up like the world is on your shoulders because somebody left you? You have all of a sudden become a sad person because somebody walk away from you. You've almost become depressed because you lost your job. When really, brothers and sisters, God has set this thing up where, where, ladies and gentlemen, our satisfaction and our fulfillment for life will only be found in Him. That does it for our show this evening. Thank you so much for joining us. We'll be right back here tomorrow evening for the entire Beyond the Headlines team. I'm Shanique Miller. Good evening. Are you tired of playing the guessing game with garbage collectors? Yeah. Yeah. Well, Impact Waste has a solution for you. Okay. Here's how we do it. Go to www.impactwaste.com. Submit a service request and pay online. It's that simple. Choose Impact Waste for all of your residential and commercial sanitization needs. Contact Impact Waste today. Join us in any one of our services every Sunday at 8 a.m. and 10 a.m. You're gonna be <laughs> An effective leader, you got to know that you're called by God. The second thing is what? Character. The third thing is what? Competence. Pastor Welch, effective, impactful leaders know how to connect with people whether they agree or disagree with them. Charisma has to do with gift. He said your gift, not your beauty, your gift will make room for you and bring you before great men. Your gift. Because you've been faithful, waking your gift and your staff, because I'll give you more. And I came by to tell somebody, I'm going to say it one more time. You have come to the kingdom for such a time as this, and the earth cannot spin until you show up and do what God called you to do. Our midday services every Tuesday and Wednesday at 12 p.m. Stream with us every first and third Monday on ILTV. The Verizon Media Group, home of ILTV, Paramount Systems Limited, Eyewitness News, and Beyond the Headlines.